hopefully this is encouraging for you if you are currently in the midst of parenting um, some teens from a hard background. Hey guys, my name is Lisa Hoppy, and my husband Peter and I are foster parents. I make weekly videos about foster care. Definitely subscribe if you are not already. Uh, in last week's video, I talked to you about Filled, which is a foster and adoptive mom uh, conference that meets once a year, and it was so encouraging, and one of the breakouts was so amazing, um, and I want to share the content that I learned in that with you. And this breakout was all about preparing to launch our trauma-affected teens into adulthood. Melissa Smallwood is the lady who ran um, this breakout, and if you go to her on Instagram, she has a lot of amazing free resources. Currently, she is doing a 14-day love challenge um, to just love the, the kids uh, and, and teens in your home well. And she also has a... Um, a whole like community on there, uh, mended hearts, and uh, there's a way to like introduce yourself and just get to learn um, from other people who are in the same space. Uh, there's also a path group that she has, uh, which is parenting adolescents with a trauma history. Um, she has some free content as well as some paid content as well. Uh, the breakout was an hour long, and honestly, I felt like I could have just sat there and learn for at least an hour more. Um, and so I just wanna share some of the nuggets um, that I learned from that. And like I said, just definitely go, if this if you are currently uh, parenting a teen from trauma, uh, foster care, adoption, kinship, definitely check her out. Uh, such amazing content. I, I've been listening to a lot of um, things about teenagers, we currently have a 17-year-old in our home, July. So it's just been, okay, how do I best prepare her? You know, she's about to be 18. There is a lot in your life that you go through in that time period without all the history of trauma. And one um, podcast I've been listening to recently is um, uh, Feeding the Mouth That Bites You. And Feeding the Mouth That Bites You uh, is an amazing just you know way of how to help prepare um teens to launch however it's not uh trauma focused and so i'm excited just um to combine what i'm learning with that with um, what melissa um, smallwood has, has been talking about so hopefully this is encouraging for you if you are currently in the midst of parenting um, some teens from a hard background and uh, she said, you know, our teenagers, they will have independent living workers or uh, life skill coaches. And she's like, you know, we live in 2024. You can just YouTube the things that you need, how to budget and all of that. But she said there are six key skills that you need to teach a teenager. These are the skills that they really need to focus on. Um, I'm going to jump back. So a little bit more about Melissa. She uh, is a former foster youth herself, and she um, became pregnant very young. Uh, and then many years later, she started, um, her and her husband started fostering, and it took her a while, but she got her college degree and her graduate degree, and she is a licensed therapist. And so she is speaking on her own lived experience uh, as well as, you know, all of the knowledge that she's learned from school, the book smarts, and now she's parenting teenagers. So it's like current. So just a wealth of wisdom. And I'm so happy that she <laughs> took the time to, to share with us. So here are the six key skills. One is time management. Two is communication and conflict resolution. And she said, you know, is effective communication modeled in your home? Does everyone in your home feel heard and understood? And that's something so important. Everyone wants to be understood. Everyone wants to be heard. So how are you helping your teenager? 
Uh, three is handling failure and disappointment. Uh, she had in big letters and over and over again that mistakes are part of the growing process. Four, self-advocacy. Uh, she said, you know, do, does your teen know how to communicate their needs? And she's like, I'm not just talking about in your house. You know, in your house, they're, if they need something, they will let you know. Uh, but are they able to communicate uh, their needs in all places? Uh, you know, she was, she was saying, encouraging them to order their own food. Um, encouraging them when they have an issue at school. To be the one to go to the teacher to talk to them about their problem. And advocate for themselves and what they need in every circumstance. Number five resourcefulness and problem solving, and six, self-care. So, you know, it's like, okay, just focusing on six things, but those are some really tough things. You're like, okay, but how do I do those things? You are um, not responsible for the outcomes of your teenagers which is really hard because you want to put all this pressure and, and help them. But at the end of the day, they need to choose for themselves. But how can you help them um, in guiding them in the right direction? And she said, you know, praise them when they reach out for guidance. Because she said, asking for help, that is a life skill. One thing that's super, super challenging for me and I am constantly working on is sometimes we just need to zip our lips and watch um, our face if advice was not asked for. So easy, you wanna give advice, you know the right thing, you can see a child or a teenager going down a path and you're like, I know where that's going to lead and wouldn't it be better if you know you try this? Um, but if they didn't ask for your advice, uh, don't give it. Uh, one thing you can do, you know, is ask questions, you know, to understand better. That's okay. But giving advice, don't do it. It's so challenging. Like, I mean, I, I wanted to be like, okay, so how, how do you not give advice when you're like, and just watch your facial expressions too. I mean, my face is an open book. If I am thinking something, my face says it. And so I have tried to control my facial expressions more. So I'm just not like, you did, you, you did what? Or you, you wanted to do what? Uh, uh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so don't give your advice um, if it is not asked for. Whew, I'm still working on that one. Another thing about, you know, zipping our lips and not, not going to offer help is, you know, you don't need to go and rescue your kids, but help them when they walk through something. So the example that she gave is, your teenager just got a job, you look at the time and you realize your kid needs to be at work in 10 minutes and it takes 20 minutes to get to work. So you already know that they're going to be late. She said, don't go running in the room and being like, look at the time. You see the time? You're going to be late. Like, let, what are you doing? Get, get going. She said, just let them. Like, don't, don't say anything, which this is the hardest thing because as a loving parent, you want to help them. Um, but she said, don't say anything. And um, when they, you know, when the boss reaches out to them and says, hey, you are late, uh, where are you? Um, you're gonna, if you keep having, having this happen, you know, we'll have to let you go. And then if they lose their job, you know, all of those things are gonna be frustrating and hard for them. But you don't have to rescue them, but when they are having a hard time, you can be there for them and be like, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so sorry, you know, that, that you lost track of time and, and that you lost your job. Like that has to be so tough and just to be there for them. Um, but I don't understand, like, I'm sure at some point, some kids can be like, well, you should have blah, blah, blah. So you, you need to set up those things. Like, you know, you are responsible and, uh, this is your responsibility. I'm not going to rescue you. And so you said at this, at this point in, your, in their life, when they are um, a teenager and becoming a young adult, that you kind of go from the manager of, hey, we're gonna be, you know, this time we need to be this place and, and, you're do, and you gotta do your homework and all of this, that you kind of turn into more their coach. 
And she had recommended um, the book by Robin Gobble, which I need to read, or maybe it's Gobel. And that is Raising Kids with Big Baffling Behaviors. Definitely want to read that book. Okay, so how can we help the kids learn these six skills? And she was using some of um, Robin Gobel's advice from Raising Kids with Big Baffling Behaviors. And the six key skills, how we help them learn those things, is by decreasing distance. Uh, sometimes they just need an um, increase in connection. Um, that might mean they, they need increased supervision. Um, so uh, they need to, you know, felt safety with you. You might have to be spending more time um, right next to them. And so if, you know, if they're really struggling with getting something done, you know, you don't have to do it for them, but you can, you know, be with them while they're trying to get um, that thing done. So sitting next to them or um, being in their space and though decreasing distance. Also, she said, focus on the basics, food, body, water, movement, um, helping them have these um, things are super important. Also, structure, routine, and predictability are so important. Uh, when a kid knows, a teenager knows, I do this at this time, um, that just, you know, that predictability really helps um, their brain to be able to learn. Um, be attuned um, to them. And she didn't go into much of that, so I'm excited to learn more, hopefully, in some of her path courses. Um, she also said scaffolding. If you think of a building, it has scaffolds on it. And as the building is being built, some of the scaffolding might start to come away. Um, so at first, you know, your, your young teens, um, they need a lot of guidance. Our teenager, when they first come to you, they need a lot of guidance. Um, and then slowly, you want to start to back off of that. Uh, but at, at first, it's going to be a lot. And uh, it, it, you know, that's a challenge because a teenager, they're not going to want a lot, especially if they're coming to you um, later in life, if it's a fostering or kinship um, placement. And also, increase connection. Express interest in the things um, that they are interested in. You may not care at all about that video game or whatever, but just asking them and um, being curious uh, about their life. Um, so hopefully, that's just a small taste. Hopefully, that was helpful for you. Um, I'm excited to, to learn more um, because I feel like there's a lot of amazing books i think of like you know connected um child and then there's connected parenting and a lot of those are great for younger kids and i know that there are um like tbri for teens i think that's a whole course i actually want to look into that um to see maybe taking something like that but always be learning uh always um you know you can always learn something new on how to best help the whoever is in your home and whoever God has placed in your home. Uh, so thanks for learning along with me. I hope that this was super helpful. And please leave a comment below on what has worked well in your home to be able to um, help a teenager launch well, help them learn a key skill, leave us all the knowledge, um, or if you have any questions, um, leave those as well. And maybe someone um, who has gone through that um, can help each other out. So I really um, love when we can keep the comment uh, section really encouraging and just, you know, be there for one another as we're all just trying to help um, kids from vulnerable places. So thanks so much for watching. Um, please subscribe if you are not already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.